support material that you've got. Um, the first bit is just recap from last week. The reason why we had definitions was to identify what we're dealing with because recognizing what account you're looking at is the most important thing. And the only way you can recognize what something is if you know what to look for. Okay, so if I know what a resource is, I'll know it's an asset, right? Okay, so these chairs and tables are resources because they're still here. We used them last week, we're using them again this week. Um, there's future benefits. Next week we'll use the same chairs and tables. Right, the projector, the laptop, the screen. Okay, those are all items of equipment that would meet the definition of an asset. So assets have a very specific definition and a very specific rule. Um, remember those rules are important in terms of application because the better you know these rules, the easier it is to interpret transactions. But the positive is the most important thing because you want to know when things increase. The decrease will obviously be the opposite. Okay, liability keyword there was obligation. Liabilities are obligations because there's a future outflow of benefit at some point in time in the future. So we don't like liabilities because in the future, we've got to pay something, we've, we've got to lose something. Right, so if you take out a loan today, there's a payment in the future that meets the definition of a liability. But remember, accounts only fit into one element. Okay, you don't get something that fits into two. It is what it is. Okay, there are different transactions that can give rise to different scenarios. So for example, you can buy an asset using cash, or you can buy the asset using credits. The asset is still the asset. It doesn't matter how you buy the asset. The thing is you can't change what it is. Right, so if you buy the vehicle and you pay cash for it, then you're affecting bank. If you buy the vehicle and you're using a vehicle and asset finance with the bank, then you're using a liability. Okay, so it doesn't matter which you you're using in terms of acquiring the asset because that's the other half of the transaction. Right, and that's what we spoke about, the double entry rule. Right, so every transaction will have two sides. Why? Because there's a buyer and, and there's a seller. So you need to account for both sides of the transaction. We also spoke about income and expenses. Income increases over here, credit side, and the definition was increasing benefits. So if you end up with today than you did yesterday, that's income. Right, so if you earn income from rent income or dividend income or interest income, that would be an income, something that you've increased in terms of benefits. And the expense would be the opposite, a decrease in benefits. Okay, again, the rules are very important. Um, is never going to ask you how did you remember the rules. Right, they're, they're never going to do that, but they're going to ask you to use the rules. Right, and they'll ask you to use the rules in different scenarios. Okay, so it could be a journal, it could be a ledger, it could be a counting equation, it could be whatever. Right, then we spoke about capital and drawings. Those were the last two. Capital, easy, starts with a C. C for capital, C for credits. D for drawings, D for debits. Those are the pluses. Capital has a very specific definition. The keyword there is by the owner by the owner. Okay, it needs to be owner related. So the owner takes or the owner gives and that will give rise to capital and drawings. Right, we spoke about the double entry last week. This is just a bit more revision. Okay, just to give you some notes regarding the different scenarios that you can have. Right, remember accounting can be studied so you can remember that if I have a capital contribution then I must debit this and, and credit that. Okay, that's I wouldn't say that's the best way of doing accounting because that requires a lot of memory and you've got to remember every single scenario. Now you get a different scenario and now you're stuck. Right, so that doesn't always work. So I would rather just study those six rules and then practice applying them. Okay, I just want to open up the rules on a separate page so I don't always have to go back and forth on the same set of notes. Okay, so you guys were asked to please study those rules. Now we need to apply them more and more and more and more because that's the analysis, that's the interpretation. Okay, your job is to interpret the transaction that has been given 
um, to then account for it correctly. Right, so if I'm looking at a capital contribution, right, you can study it and you can say, well, capital is always credited, but this is important. If you understand why it's credited, then you don't have to study it. Right, I mean, if you understand how something works, that's the most important bit. Right, so if I read this transaction, okay, these are quite basic. We looked at quite a lot last week in terms of the ones in your um, study guide, and you can go and you can go back and look at more of those. Okay, I forgot to email you the working. I think I only attached um, the the PDFs. I know you wanted the PDFs. I think I I, forgot, I left out the working ones. I'll make sure I send it this week, um, so you guys can check some of the other workings that you that you've got. Okay, so the owner gives a million to the business. Keyword, owner, gives, because that already tells you, ooh, capital, because you've learned the definition. Those definitions don't change. Resource, obligation, inflow, outflow of benefits. Okay, owner gives, owner takes. That's it. It's those six. Then you just apply it to different scenarios. Okay, so here's a scenario where the owner gives a million to the business. This should have stood out because that's cash. Okay, you should be thinking about keywords and elements. So the keyword here would be bank, and the other keyword would be capital. Okay, so those keywords you would have pulled out from the information. Okay, and the transaction could have been longer, it could have been shorter, it doesn't really matter, but your job is to interpret it correctly. So there's definitely no sale here. This is not taking from the business. This is not an expense. This is not income. Okay, the only option you have here is cash being given by the owner to the business, which is capital. So that is the only option that you've got. Bank is bank. Bank will always be an asset. Okay, it can be a liability, but then that's called an overdraft. Okay, a bank overdraft. You might have come across that term maybe you, while you were going through some of the material. Okay, ahead of time. Right, so what's happening to the asset? Is it going up or down? It's going up. Why? Because if you give your business cash, your business's bank account's going to increase. Okay, it's logical, right? Okay, so your bank account increases. So, uh, which one was it? This one. Okay, assets increase where? Here. Right, and now you know what to do with this. Debit. One million. And that's the working. Capital, you don't even have to study it because the word C, capital, okay, C stands for credit, so you just write it down here. Okay, you don't have to worry about capital. It's straightforward. It's always as straightforward as that, okay, for this module. Right, the next one, acquiring a loan. Same thing applies here. Can you interpret it correctly? You can study it, and you can remember that if I have a loan, always credit that account. That's fine. You can do it that way. That's one way to get by, okay, if the debits and credits are just too much. Right. If you don't want to do it that way, you can apply your knowledge because you know the six rules. You just need to interpret the transaction correctly. The company obtains two million. That would have stood out. The word loan from a bank stood out because that gives you the keywords. Okay, so you're getting more money from the bank. Right, the bank is giving you a loan. So the first keyword would be loan. It doesn't matter which order you put it in. You could have put bank first and loan after. It makes no difference. As long as you've got both, every debit has a credit, and that's what we're looking at here. Okay, it's just digging a bit deeper into the whole um, analysis of transactions part that we looked at last week. So if I have a loan, what happens to the loan? Did it go up or down? Well, did I have a loan before I took it out? No. So I had zero as a loan. Do I have a loan now? Yes. Right, so if you take out a loan with the bank, you're going to have more loans with the bank. It's, it's logical. So the loan account, you should know, is an obligation to pay, which makes it a liability. And it's going up because you're taking out a loan. You have more of an obligation today than you did before, and therefore liability increase. And that's what you want. Okay, that's, I'm putting that in brackets because you don't have to show your niece of that. Okay, they don't, they don't want to see that. Okay, they don't want to see the debit or the credit with the amount. Or 
they want to see the accounting equation with the right column, with the right amount. Okay, so the bracket is what you should be thinking about, which is the application of this. Okay, this is what you study, and then you see, ooh, liability. Increase plus on the credit, now I know what to do. Two million on the credit side. And it's as simple as that. Okay, bank, well, what happens to your bank if you take out a loan? It goes up. Right, yes, you owe the bank, but that's the liability side of things. In terms of cash, more cash comes into your account. Okay, so the cash side of things relates to the asset, asset increase. Okay, then you look at this again, and you see, oh, assets increase here, because I studied it, and I put the two million there. And that's what you do. Okay, and you've, you've got to practice doing this. Right, and that's why I'm, I'm revising this because if you guys can't get this right, then everything else kind of falls flat. Because if you don't know what's happening in the transaction, then yeah, there's no hope really. Okay, so you need to practice this as much as possible. Okay, and that's why you've got some exercises in the notes. You've got exercises in your study guide. You've got, well, you've got that second book with all those additional exercises. Okay, and those are mainly past papers. So I wouldn't look at those yet because the standard's a bit higher. Rather stick to the study guide and maybe stick to the notes. Um, and there is that volume one account about accounting that they've prescribed in the past that I think is recommended this year, not prescribed, but yeah, the textbook. I can bring it for you next week and show you what it looks like. Okay, well, that, then you're lucky. Okay, all right, but yeah, so then you can use that. But that's just additional, um, that's just to help supplement your studies, okay, like the notes and like with anything else that you get. Okay. Another one, buying or purchasing assets. You can study it and you can remember that if I buy or purchase an asset and I'm using cash, the bank is credited. That's the rule, but if we understand why, it makes more sense. Right, so that's what you can study. The NB is the study part. The application is this. Right, so you get a transaction, the transaction says an asset was purchased for a million. This word asset could have been replaced with anything. It could have been vehicles, land and buildings, machinery, computer, cell phone, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's a resource. Okay, so we can call it maybe a vehicle. It's an asset. And if I'm buying a vehicle, what happens to the vehicles? It goes up. Again, logical. Did you have a vehicle before? No. You've got one now. There's an increase. Where do assets increase? You go back to this. You look at that. Ooh, asset there. Debit there. Brilliant. I know what to do. Debit, one million for the vehicle. Right. The last part would have stood out. Paid by check. Paid by check, meaning this is cash, this is coming from the bank. And that's why you credit the bank. Because bank is an asset and it is decreasing. If you're paying money from your bank account, your bank account is going to decrease. Right, your bank account is an asset, your bank account is therefore going to be credited because a negative is on the credit side. So one million will be recorded on that side. That's what you guys have to do. Okay, just time and time and time again, and just make sure it gets better and easier and quicker. All right, here's another one. Buying an asset with credits. Okay, so I'm still buying an asset, but now the perspective has changed. Right, so option, uh, well, 3A was cash, 3B is credit. Okay, so if I'm looking at credits, creditors is always credited. That's what you can study, that's what you can learn. Right, you can look at the example to apply what you know. An asset was purchased for 500000 on account. See, the key word there is on account. Obviously, the word asset. Again, it could have been anything. Let's call it equipment. Doesn't matter. Equipment is an asset. Okay, so the equipment is increasing. If equipment is increasing... We need to identify where does it increase. Okay, we know it's an asset. That was given in the example. 
assets increase there, debit side, so again, put the 500,000 on that side, plus 500,000 if you want to. Okay, the plus is referring to this, asset increase or decrease. Okay, so you might have seen pluses and minuses. I'm gonna discuss it when we look at the accounting equation. It's actually quite a very straightforward process. It's everything you're doing here, just asked in a specific format. Okay, the next part of this would be the creditor. Creditors is a liability. Did you have a liability before you purchased? No. Do you have a liability now? Yes. The more you buy on account, the more you're going to owe the supplier. Okay, the creditor. So, creditors is liability is increasing. Where do liabilities increase? We go back to what we've studied. Liabilities increase there. Bingo, I know what to do. I credit this account. Plus. And there's another one. Okay. There's quite a few here. All examples of things we've looked at. Okay. Right, the next one. Payments to a creditor. What happens if I now pay a creditor? Well, there's the rule. The bank is always credited. But when you pay, you pay using cash. You pay using the money in your bank account. So you can study that, you can remember it, or you can apply the rules. Right, the previous 500,000 that we purchased on credit is settled. So if I'm settling an outstanding liability, is the liability gonna go up or down? Exactly. That's the interpretation. That's everything that you need. You just needed to remember what the key word was, which was creditor, liability, decrease. There's the working. Then you look at the rule, okay, or you recall from memory, where do liabilities decrease? Here, there's the minus on that side, which means debit the liability account with 500. Okay, and here, uh, the other one I showed a plus, then I'm gonna show a minus. How did I make a payment? I had to use cash in the bank to make the payments. Bank we know is an asset. If you're paying, the bank is gonna decrease. If you look at your rule, assets decrease there. Credit side, so now you know where to put this. Minus 500. Right, here's one for you guys to try. I've done quite a few now with you. Can you guys quickly get the accounts? Write in the account names and the amounts. Okay, where do I put the one million? What we're focusing on here is a payment from a debtor. A payment from a debtor is very specific. Okay, debtors are customers that owe you. They arise when we have a credit sale. Okay, we'll look at that in more detail in a later unit. Okay, uh, there are notes covering that. The difference between debtors and creditors. Okay, right now, what we just need to realize is debtors are customers that owe us. If we receive payment from debtors, good or bad, good. We need to study this. Bank is debited, but let's understand why. Okay, so highlight the keywords in this example and then write in the correct amounts in the correct T account. The word debtor would have stood out and the word one million would have stood out. If you're settling or if they're settling their outstanding debts, your perspective is key. Okay, so whenever you have a transaction, you always look at it from the business's point of view. Right, so they're talking about the law firm, okay, that's the business. Okay, you look at everything from the law firm's perspective. Right, so if I have a debtor, a debtor would be a client. Okay, a client who hasn't paid you 
but you've rendered a service for them. Okay? That would be a debtor. So the debtor would be representing an asset because they're your resource. You will collect a payment from them at some point in time in the future. Asset increase. Assets increase on this side, so you would put a million rand here. Okay, then you are going to be affecting, oh, hold on, debtor. If they're paying you, it's a decrease, not an increase. Okay, sorry. The bank is going up. All right, so do you have more debtors or less debtors? Yes. Less debtors, okay, because the debtor's actually paying you. All right, so they're paying you, the one million should have gone this side, sorry. Okay. All right, the bank... What happens to the bank? Well, if they're paying you, do you receive money from them? Yes. So the bank would have gone up, so the one million would have gone there. Right, so it's quite easy to pick up on a mistake because obviously the other side didn't make logical sense because I can't have two debits. Okay, then I knew I made a mistake, so then I had to go back and see, okay, there's the mistake. Debt to asset decrease. Okay, if the debtor pays you, you don't have more debtors, you have less debtors. Right, here's another one for you guys to try. Owner takes. This is what you study. Drawings is debited. You can study that. You can remember it. When you see something like this, you can just write down drawings debit. That's fine. It's better to understand it, though. Okay, so that's what we're trying to achieve. So the other part of it would have been the bank, right? The owner didn't take an asset. The owner took cash. Okay, so if they took, if they took a vehicle, that's possible. They could have taken equipment. They could have taken stock. They could have taken whatever. Right, but they took cash. So cash is going to affect the bank. Okay, minus 100,000 here. Why? Assets decrease. Okay, this one's a little bit different. It's short and simple. Cash sales. The keyword is cash and sales. Cash affects the bank. Sales is sales. Bank asset increase. Yes, sales, income, increase. Okay, so we're going to show a plus 3 million here. And we're going to show a plus 3 million there. Yet to study it, bank is always going to be debited if you're receiving income. Does it have to be sales? No, it can be any income. Okay, the rule is just looking at income as a whole. Right, so you could have replaced the word sales with services rendered. Okay, fee income. Okay, you guys look more at law type of scenarios. Okay, so lawyers earn a fee. So fee income could be what you could put there instead of sales. Okay, you're not really going to sell something. It's, it's a service that you render. Okay, so maybe services rendered or maybe fee income. Right, paying expenses. Bank is always credited. So here we're paying for the telephone bill. It's paid by check, 5,000. Bank, one account. Asset decrease because you're paying. 
telephone second accounts. Okay, be careful with this one. We spoke about it last week. Did you have an expense before? No. So you had zero as a telephone expense. Do you now have an expense? Yes. Okay, so it's the recording of the expense. It's the accounting of the expense. Okay, that's what you're looking at. Okay, so just be careful you don't interpret it incorrectly. Right, so expense increase might seem strange but it's correct it's because you had zero as an expense and now you have 5,000 as an expense. Right, so your expense needs to be recorded and expenses go up where? Well, you've studied this. There's the rule. Expenses increase on the debit side. So plus 5,000 here. Bank asset decrease minus 5,000 on the credit side. Okay, you guys try this one. I spoke about a cash sale. Let's see if you can identify what's happening here for a credit sale. Okay, the rule is quite straightforward and simple. Debtors must always be debited. But why? Okay, let's let's see. Sales and debtors, yes, sales and debtors would be correct. So hopefully you've got those two accounts, debtors. That's the rule that you could study if you wanted to. Okay, but if you're looking at this, credit sales of a million to a company. Okay, obviously the keyword is credit sales. Right, now we know that credit sales are, are dealing with debtors. Okay, we call those customers our debtors. What's happening to them? They're going up. Okay, you have more debtors when you sell. You don't have less. And the sales. Income increasing. Right, so asset increase, 1 million. Assets, you should know, increase over here. 1 million. Sales, income increase. Just to look at that rule, there's the income, there's the increase, so credit side. Okay, I think last week someone asked me about plusing and minusing. Okay, here I've got two pluses. Here I had a plus and a minus. Okay, um, I might have had a minus minus in one of them. Um, well, possibly. We'll see one later on. I think there's a payment of a debtor. Yes, coming up, I think. No. Okay, but if you pay off a, you can have two negatives. So the sign is not important. Okay, so ignore the sign. The sign is just application of the rules. That's all it is. Okay, there is only one debit and there is only one credit. Okay, you can have a debit and a credit that both represent a plus, or you can have a debit and a credit that both represent a minus. Or you can have a debit and a credit that's the ultimate. Okay, so one plus and one minus. Okay, you don't always have to have a plus and a plus or a minus and a minus. So forget about that if you thought that. Okay, just approach it the way that we've been doing it. This is the first step. Get the working. Once you've got the working, then this is literally application of this. That's all. Okay. There's no thought process there because it's just, well, what does the rule tell me to do? That's all. Okay. The thought process comes here. Okay. And that's why that's the most important. Right. Do you know what you're dealing with? So, in other words, can you recognize the account? And then can you apply the rule? That's it. Okay, and last week we had some steps. Just get the account, get the element, increase or decrease.
that's it. The debit and credit will take care of itself as long as you, uh, as long as you've studied this. Okay. All right. There's one more. Stage three board on accounts. You guys do this one. Keywords here, the word stationary, the word on account. Okay, maybe bought if you want to, because that tells you're buying on account. So it's not a sale, okay, it's a purchase. Right, so if you have a expense, okay, stationary is an expense. Okay, the reason why stationary is an expense is because it's used up. There's no future benefit. Okay, the pens and the pencils that you that you guys are using. The minute you put that onto the paper and you've written with that ink or you've used the, the, the lead, that's it. Yeah, there's no getting it back. Okay, so stationery is an expense. And again, be careful with this one. Okay, it's the recording of the expense that's important. All right, so you're recording an expense that you didn't have. Okay, I bought stationery. I'm recording an expense, expense increase. Plus... 10,000. It's on account, it's on credit, so creditor. Or creditors. Bracket liability increase. Okay, you're going to owe them more because you've bought from them. Plus 10,000 on that side. Okay, and that's revision of the double entry. Okay, we spoke about it last week. Now I have a few more examples to look at. Okay, the reason why we've got those examples is because we're going to be discussing journals and I just want to give you guys perspective. Okay, so I've given you the process here. Um, last week I asked you guys for your opinion on accounting and what does it do. Okay, we said accounting was a language that helps us to provide information relating to finance, money. Okay, so if I have a transaction, a transaction can be interpreted and understood using this language. Okay, and the language is universal. All right, so you can talk to a CA about accounting and the rules they use are exactly the same. Okay, there's no difference. Okay, so it is what it is. Okay, we can't change those rules, but we can apply them to different scenarios. Right, so the transaction is the first step. Transactions need to be recorded in a source document right these are some examples checks invoices receipts debit or credit notes okay nowadays things are done electronically so an sms notification okay or a email okay those are proofs that something has occurred that something has happened okay that, that a transaction has taken place okay an eft a, um, a proof of payment okay those would all be source documents okay a source document proves that a transaction exists. Right, and this is where the auditors like to look at in terms of checking. Okay, so when they talk about an audit, generally they'll take a sample. Okay, remember big companies have millions of invoices. Right, so there's no way that an accountant's going to go through millions of invoices. Right, so all they're going to do is they're going to audit okay, the invoices that might have the most risk. Okay, so we're not going to look at purchases of stationery worth a thousand rand like a multi-million rand company okay but maybe a million up okay or that might even be insignificant for a multi-million company okay but that's something look at materiality okay one of those those qualitative things that we spoke about okay so that's part of the audit okay that's what they look at what do journals do grouping Right, so are we going to sell once and that's it? No. Okay, we're going to sell multiple times. Okay, 
are we going to buy once and that's it? No, we'll buy multiple times. So every time we buy or every time we sell, we're going to group similar transactions in something called a journal. Okay, that's the purpose of a journal. You get cash journals, you get credit journals, and you get a general journal. Right, the ones that are important are the cash and credit. General is for anything. Okay, so anything else that you don't have a specific box for. Okay, it's like boxing the receipts. Okay, so you guys, if we had to apply it practically, okay, you go to the store, you buy groceries, but then you also buy certain luxuries. Okay, so your spending, right, then you put that in boxes, right? The groceries will be the groceries, okay, stuff that you consume. Right, and then maybe something else which is separate, maybe entertainment. Okay, that's one box. Okay, and you spend money on that, and maybe another box is, I don't know, debt that you're paying off. Or another box could be assets that you're buying. Okay, so a journal is exactly that. It's, it's grouping things together to keep things simple. Because if you're selling to someone, if I sell to you, or if I sell to someone else, is that still a sale? Yes. Are the same accounts going to be affected? Yes. Okay, so here we had a credit sale to company A. If I sold to company B, will this debit and credit and will that amount still be the same? Well, the debit and credit will still be the same. The amounts might be different. Okay, but the application is still the same. Okay, the accounts that are affected are still the same. B, C, D, all the way through to Z. Okay, if you're going to be selling to all those companies and they're all your debtors, you'll have debtors for all of them, sales for all of them. Okay, so all of that could be grouped into one journal. All right, that's the purpose of a journal. It's to keep things together. Right, then you've got something called a ledger. A ledger is the T-account. Okay, you've probably seen it. Okay, debit and credit. Okay, debit left, credit right, it's a little T-account, okay, where you can record things on the left of the account and record things on the right account. That's the ledger, right? And the ledger is specific in terms of the account, right? So you'll have a bank account. So I'll have a T-account for the bank, and I'll have a T-account for the debtor, and I'll have a T-account for the sales. Um, sorry, going up here. Okay, see, this is one account. Stationery is its own account. Creditors is its own account. Sales is its own account. Debtors is its own account. Bank is its own account. Okay, so those accounts will have different groups of transactions. Okay, because we know bank can go up and bank can also come down. Okay, so when I say specific account, we're looking at the ups and downs in that specific account. Okay, in other words, the debits and credits in that specific account. Okay, we're not looking at groups of transactions. We're looking at one account with um, debits and credits affecting it. Okay. Right, then you've got a trial balance, which is just a list. That's all it is. It's a list, and it's a list of all of those accounts. Okay, so you'll have a list and you'll have different account names on there. You'll have vehicles, land and buildings, equipment, debtors, creditors, sales, fee income, stationery, etc., etc. Like every single account that you've ever had in your business that you've transacted uh, with in terms of buying or selling will be part of that trial balance. Okay. Right, and then you've got the last step, which is the financial statements. Okay, and that's the information. That's the info. Right, so last week we said the purpose of the accountant is just to give us information. Right, and then obviously the financial manager, okay, the manager, the decision maker, they make a decision based on that information. Okay, so if you guys had to track your own accounts, how much do you spend on entertainment every month? How much do you spend on groceries every month? How much do you spend on fuel, okay, travel? How much do you spend on clothing? 
how much do you spend on etc okay assets liabilities whatever all right so if you spend too much on maybe drinking okay that could be an area that you could make a decision okay maybe that's not a very good thing to spend money on okay if you're spending more money on your assets okay maybe a better idea okay or elsewhere okay it doesn't really matter but the, the point i'm trying to make is that it's information that helps you to make a decision okay that's the key right, that's basically what accounting is it's this whole process right so coming back to the general ledger okay the most important account that you guys are going to have to always know how to how to balance off is bank right so when looking at a general a general ledger account what is a general ledger account you guys can probably answer it. Specific account for a specific? No. Okay. And elements, there are only six. These are elements. Okay. You get different accounts that can be classified according to one of the six elements. Okay. So an account is representing something that the business has paid for, has bought, has sold okay kind of yeah so specific accounts for specific things okay so is bank a specific account yes it's dealing with bank okay does bank have an element yes it's an asset okay so that's the difference between the account and the element Okay, the element is more high level, okay, because all accounts are one of the elements. Okay, every single account that you will ever see will be one of these six, and that's it. And these are the only six. Right, why, uh, why are the general ledger accounts important? Something to consider. You can look at specific things. Okay, specific things. Right, that's what I was trying to use that as an example. Okay, if you're spending too much money on, I don't know, tobacco, okay, maybe you're a smoker, right? And that could be something that you might want to change. Okay, spending money to spending too much money on X or Y. Okay, doesn't really matter, but you would be able to identify where you're spending what. Okay, can companies do the same thing? Yes, companies will know they're spending too much money here or here, anywhere. Right, so what is going to happen to bank? Well, we spoke about journals. What journal do you think is going to record receipts? A receipts journal. Okay, that's straightforward. Right, so what would a cash receipts journal do to the bank account? Yes, okay, so all transactions that increase the bank would have been captured in a journal. So from a journal, a cash receipts journal there will be a total right because it doesn't matter who gave us money it could have been the customer it could have been the debtor okay when i say customer i'm referring to a cash customer and a debtor a credit customer or it could have been rent the tenant the tenant giving us money okay it could have been the bank giving us interest income it doesn't matter where it came from okay if money is being received money will be received and recorded in the cash receipts journal right so all those transactions will have what in common bank because all those transactions will affect what account the bank okay so any receipt doesn't matter where it came from it could have been interest income rent income sales fee income services rendered income fill in the blank income okay that income will always increase bank if it's received in the form of cash okay so the total would always go on this side and that would always increase right then the same thing applies for the credit side from a cash payments journal okay c p j cash payments referring to an outflow of money okay so if i buy furniture and i pay cash will that affect the bank of course it will 
if I buy stage me full of this, will that affect the bank? Of course, if I pay cash. Okay, if I pay for the water and electricity, will that affect the bank? Yes, if I pay cash. It doesn't matter what I buy. It can be an asset. If I pay the creditor, if I pay the creditor, will that affect the bank? Yes, because you pay them cash. Okay, so any transaction that affects the bank would be recorded in a specific journal. Right, so all payments from the bank will be recorded in a cash payments journal. And all payments from a cash payments journal would decrease the bank. Okay, that's the plus and the minus. Right, but we're taking from the journals. Right, is it important to get a trial balance? Definitely, we spoke about the debits and the credits. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to check. So the trial balance is just a check to see if the debits equal the credits. Can okay, remember that basic accounting rule? That's why we need the trial balance. Okay, nowadays, accounting is done electronically. Right, so the computer will automatically do the check every time you're posting transactions. Okay, so accountants can still post transactions that are incorrect. That can still occur. But um, this shouldn't really occur because the system would pick up if the amounts aren't the same. Okay, back in the day when accounting was done with pen and paper, then obviously that would be a bigger consideration. Okay, nowadays it's not that important. Right, the most important thing there, ensuring accuracy. Why do we need accurate financial statements? Because people are going to make those decisions based on those numbers. So you're going to give those statements to a manager, okay, or you give those statements as evidence, and then someone's going to make a decision okay, based on that. Right, I spoke about the financial statements. Um, don't worry too much about that. That's just page references. Um, the textbook is referring to that about accounting. Um, if you do see financial statements, just appreciate what they look like. Um, I gave you example statements but very basic we are had like for financial position we said assets and liabilities will be recorded and then owners equity as well but summarized statement of comprehensive income you'll see income and you'll see expenses we know the difference between your income and your expenses is profit or loss and then statement of changes in equity it's a special own account owners equity okay from last week you know that owners equity is affected by four accounts. The capital, the drawings, the income, and the expenses. Right, so that, that's just the information that's provided to the decision makers. Right, so when managers ask for reports, okay, or financials, um, that's what would be provided. Okay, those are the three basic ones. There, there, there is one other, but you don't cover it, cash flows, okay, inflows and outflows. Right, any questions so far? Are we okay? All right. The goal of accounting? To provide information. That's all it is. Okay, it's about creating information, providing information, summarizing information. Right, so do any of you know exactly how much you spend on groceries every month? Probably not. Okay, maybe you do. And the reason maybe you do is maybe because you keep record of it. Okay, so useful information. Okay, that could be useful information in your household. Why? Because then you'll know how much you spend on groceries. Okay, maybe next month you don't spend as much because maybe you've got too much of the one item and you need maybe more of the other item. Right, so useful information to users. Okay, so we talk about your households. Okay, you know if, you, if you're starting to run out of stationery, you start buying a little bit more. Okay, because it's information to make a decision. Right, maybe we need to look at processing the data. This is looking at the journals. Right, so, so far what we've covered is transactions, analysis, interpretation, and number two, source document, that's the proof, okay, receipts, checks, etc. Six is looking at the transactions, okay, the journals. Question, when do we record transactions? Good. Okay, so last week we spoke about the accrual versus the cash principle. That's an important principle to remember. Okay, accountants use this, the accrual basis. 
That's what they use. And the reason why they use the accrual basis is because they don't care when the cash actually comes in. They just want to know, did a transaction take place? Right, so if you, if you sell something on credit, is that a transaction? Yes. Okay, when you receive the payment from that sale, is that a transaction? Yes. See, but they're two separate transactions. Okay, but both transactions have to be recorded. And that's the reason why they account for things using the accrual basis, because it's more accurate. Why? Because now you're accounting for giving someone the item and then also receiving payment from, from it, uh, for it later. Okay, so it's proof. It's accounting for everything as and when. So that's the cruel basis. Transactions are, are recorded when they arise. Okay, so the moment you buy something, the moment you sell something. Right, so when you go into a store and you buy something on account, okay, maybe you've got an account with one of the big retailers. Okay, the moment you buy something from them, do they record the sale? Yes. They don't wait for you to come back two, three months down the line and pay for the item. Okay, the moment you walk out of that store with their item, there, there was a transaction. Why? You've got a source document. They exchanged goods with a promise to pay. Okay, your promise to pay. Right, so those are the journals that you can get. There are cash receipts, there are purchases, there's sales, and there's general journals. Right, the ones that are more important are the cash journals. Those are always more important because you guys do a bank reconciliation. Okay, so with the cash journal, what is the focus here? Well, it's cash, so what is the focus? Exactly. Okay, so the key word, if you are given journals, the key word to remember is bank for any cash journal. Increase or decrease depending on receipts or payments. Straightforward. Right, purchases and purchases returns. Who do you make purchases from? Your supplier. Right, and that refers to a journal that, that, that's owing, okay, that, that you have an outstanding liability. Okay, so purchases and purchases returns relates to creditors. Again, up or down, increase or decrease. Right, but that's the focus. It's the credits. I think I might even have written this in the okay. Sales, who do we sell to? Our customers. If we're recording it in a journal, well the customers that buy on credit are debtors. Okay, so the focus there, sales and sales returns would be the debtors. Right, so now remember earlier I said the journals is just that. It's just a classification box. Right, so I'm going to have multiple receipts. I'm going to have multiple payments. I'm going to have multiple customers that buy on credit. I'm going to have multiple suppliers that I buy from. Okay, so all of those purchases, all of those sales, all of those receipts and payments go to their own specific journal. Okay, it's just a way to keep track of everything. Because can you imagine, like a big company, okay, millions of brands in revenue, Right, they're going to have hundreds of thousands or millions of transactions. Okay, and all, the, all of those transactions need to be monitored and managed as best as possible. So the journals helps you to do that. Right, so let's summarize the journals. In a cash receipts journal, what will you always debit? What will you always credit? Debit the bank always, yes, why? Exactly. Cash receipts journal. There's the key. Cash that you've received. If you've received cash, what do you think is going to happen to your bank? It's going to go up. Exactly. Okay, let's write these in. And then credit, other. Why do I say other? Because it could be different things. Okay, you could have put income here sales. You could have put debtors here. Okay, can a debtor pay you? Yes. Will you receive money? Yes. Okay, we looked at this earlier. Okay, debit bank, credit, debtors. Or, if it was income, debit bank, credit, sales. If it was income, yes. Okay, an asset. 
All right, so there could be other, just other. Leave it open. Okay, the, the main one is that one. That's the one that, that's more important. Payment, same thing here. That's the more important one. Bank, asset, decrease. Right, elements affected, other. Right, can I pay for an expense? Yes. Then you'll credit the bank, you'll debit the expense, whatever it is. Water and light, stationery, there's a lot. Can I pay a liability? Yes. Credit the bank, debit the liability. It could be the loan, it could be the creditor, it could be any liability. You agree? Okay. Can I buy an asset with cash? Yes. Again, you'll credit the bank and then you'll debit the assets, the vehicle, the furniture, the equipment. Okay. So that's open ended. The debit could be anything. Right. But if it's the cash payments journal, you cannot change this. This will always apply. Okay, and see, like those are the things that you could actually um, remember. Okay, obviously the reference here, the study guide wouldn't be relevant because it has changed, but the textbook is still relevant if you are using that about accounting volume one. Okay. Right, purchase this journal. Perfect. Debit or credit? Exactly. What's happening to the credit as always? Yes, when you're purchasing. Yeah, so again, the other, can you buy an asset on credit? Yes. Can you buy or pay for an expense on credit? Yes. Okay, you can buy stationery on credit. You could buy a vehicle on credit. Right, so the key is the liability. Yeah, increase. Okay, and then are you always happy with the items you Sometimes you return it. Can that occur in accounting? Of course it can. All right, so what would you do? The opposite. You would remove or reduce the liability. Okay, so that's the key one. Down, decrease. Okay, and then the creditor would have been the other, whatever it is. Okay, it could have been the stock or the trading stock or the inventory that's decreasing. It could have been the stationery that's decreasing could have been the equipment that's decreasing. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. Right, and then we've got two more here. Sales and sales returns. Keyword here. Okay. Debtors. If you're selling, the debtors will always go up. Always, 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 always go up. That's the key one. And are your customers always happy? No, not always. So, that they can return. Okay, the credit here, we can be more specific. Let's be more specific. Because if I sell equipment, that's the line of business that I'm in. Okay, it will still be considered sales. Right, the item doesn't matter. Okay, so if you're a carpenter and you're selling furniture, okay, we don't write furniture there. Because furniture for a carpenter is what they've got in their workshop. Does that make sense? Okay, furniture to a carpenter would be inventory that they would sell. Okay, and inventory could be anything to whatever business. Okay, Apple sells technology. Okay, pick and pay sells groceries. Um, Edgar sells clothing. Okay, so all of those items, whether it's technology, whether it's food, whether it's groceries, whether it's clothing, it's still inventory. Okay, so with this, sales would be sales or maybe fee income. Okay, because you guys are the lawyers, okay, the, account, uh, the law practitioners, so fee income. Okay, or services rendered even. Right, so there we can be a bit more specific. Right, with sales returns, the sales can decrease, so sales returns. Okay, just with just a note about this because it might be the first time you're seeing this. So sales income. Sales would be increasing. Income increase. Sales returns. Is that income? No. Sales returns would be an expense. That's increasing. Okay, because you, you, 
you show both transactions. Okay, because let's think about this. Let's say you're selling something. Okay, so you have a sale and then you process the sale. Now the customer returns a good. Do you cancel the sale? You are effectively. But now if you cancel the sale, what does that say? That you never sold in the first place. Okay, do businesses need to identify what was returned and what was sold? Yes, because that helps with decision making. Right, so if you're selling a million rand worth of items and a million rand's coming back, something wrong with your products. Okay, but now if you only took off sales, then you would have shown nothing. So now did you sell anything? You did sell something. Okay, but if, if I had to debit the sales, do you agree that would have cancelled that? So then the accountant would have shown nothing. Okay, rather than the accountant showing one million rand worth of sales minus one million rand worth of returns. Do you see how that differs? Okay, it, it makes a big difference because it's decision making. Okay, showing no sales, sorry, the mouse pad. Showing no sales means you've sold nothing. Okay, showing one million rand of sales shows you've sold something, just everybody brought it back. Okay, there's a very big difference there. Okay. All right, and then the debit is the straightforward one, uh, the credit, sorry, the debtors. That's the easy bit. Okay, debtors, assets. Right, and the last one is the general, which is for anything else. Okay, here I can't give you anything to study or learn or remember because different scenarios require different debits and credits. What I can say, though, is unusual transactions that don't go in a separate journal. So if you don't have anything that goes into these two or these two or those two, okay, then you can use the general journal. All right, so the general journal is just for other transactions okay right I see in your textbook the VAT has come up quite early on okay before the VAT comes up a little bit later so we need to talk a little bit with the tax side of things okay but I'll mention that um, this I don't want to touch on yet so we'll come back to it if we need it here's the VAT part okay value added tax how much is VAT is it Yes, okay, so you guys are kind of like the transition year, okay, because in February they made an announcement after they um, yeah, delivered the budget speech that that was increasing from 14 to 15%. Yeah, you have to use 14%. Okay, so they're still testing this, so just ignore that for now. But just bear that in mind that obviously in, in the real world, in reality, um, it's 15 years. Okay. Right, so always check the question and determine if the business is a VAT vendor. That's important. Right, and this is everything. This is what you need to learn for VAT. Okay, you draw this picture or you imagine it, you picture it. Okay, so if I have a VAT vendor, remember whose perspective do you look at? The business. Okay, so you are looking at a VAT registered entity, a VAT vendor. Okay, that's your perspective. Okay, that's what you're going to be looking at. Okay, then you are sitting here in the middle. Okay, you are the accountant. Okay, the person. Okay, that's running the business. Right, so if I'm a VAT registered vendor, when I buy goods, goods come in, and therefore you've got input VAT. Let me change the color. Input VAT. Right, and then when you sell something, are goods going in or out? Goods are going out, and that's why you've got output VAT. Okay, so that's the easy bit. In and out. Okay. If goods go out, you're selling, you're not buying. Okay, so if you're running this business, 
okay? Say you're Woolies, okay? And you are going to be selling groceries to your customer. Okay, the customer comes into the store and they buy groceries, okay? You've sold something to the customer. Let's say the item, okay, I'm going to use 14 because it's, that's what they're going to test you on. So assuming the item costs 228 rand, okay? If the item costs 228 rand, how much does the business keep? How much does the business keep? 14% of that, yes. Okay, so do you guys know how to calculate the VAT exclusive amount? You've got to time it by 100, and you've got to divide it by 114, and that'll give you the VAT exclusive amount, okay, which is 200. Okay, I've used easy numbers here. 200 is the VAT exclusive, and then you've got 28, which is the VAT. Okay, so what is the output VAT? It's the 28. This is the output VAT. This is the output VAT. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so you buy an item from the store. The store prices that item at the VAT inclusive amount, and the reason for that is because they're registered for VAT. Okay, you probably don't have to go too much in detail with who needs to register, why do they need to register, just to give you the short answer. Okay, yeah. If your turnover is a million or more, you don't have an option. Okay, you have to register. Why? Because SARS wouldn't mind getting 15% or 14% on all your sales. Okay, if you're under a million, then it's up to you. You can decide on whether or not you want to register. Okay, the reason why you would want to register is because you can claim the input VAT. Okay, so let's just, let's just finish up this discussion. Is that 28 that you collect from the customer? So when the customer comes to the till, they give you 228 rand. Do you keep all of it for yourself? No. You keep the 200 because that's your sale. You give 28 to SARS because you're the, you're the agent. Okay, you're keeping it on their behalf. Right, so does that meet the definition of a liability? Yes, why? Obligation to pay SARS. See, the keyword comes up again. Right, so when you sell something and it has VAT, just remember that VAT's not yours. That VAT is theirs. Okay, so there's an obligation to pay to them. There's a definition. The answer is liability. Right, so now you know output VAT is a liability. Right, then the other side of things. Right, so VAT isn't a bad thing for businesses. Okay, the people that actually get affected are, are us, the consumers. Okay, because we're the ones that ultimately pay it. Okay, businesses don't care what VAT is. VAT could be 30%. Okay, whatever they pay, they claim. Right, and whatever you pay, they just collect. So it actually doesn't affect them. Right, VAT affects the consumer. Right, but we're looking at this, the inputs. Right, so why would a VAT vendor want to register, it's because they can claim VAT on the item that they've purchased. Right, so I bought this item for 114, okay? There would have been 14 VAT, so the item would have cost me 100, effectively. Right, so what do I record as my benefit? The 14%. Okay, 14% is something that you claim from SARS. So what happens at the end of every month for most businesses, there are different categories, but we're not going to look at that. Okay. At the end of every month, they look at this, the output and the input, and they see which is bigger. Right, so for most businesses, they should be selling more than they're buying. Okay, but the other way around, there's a problem. Okay, you can get a scenario where you get zero rated suppliers. Okay, fruits and vegetables are zero rated. Right, so if, you, if, you, if you're a farmer and you're running a grocery store and you're only selling the fruit and vegetables, okay, you wouldn't be collecting 14% on any of those items. Okay, but you can claim the VAT that you pay on your rent, the VAT that you pay on your water and lights and all of that other stuff. Okay, so you can get a refund or you can get a liability. 
Okay, those are the two options. Right, practically, most businesses end up with a liability. Okay, the businesses that end up with the refund are those businesses that are zero rated. Okay, so providing fuel as well, okay, because there's a fuel levy on our petrol. Okay, so petrol stations are zero rated. Right, so they can claim on all their expenses, but there's no VAT on petrol. Right, it's already so expensive. Now, can you imagine another 15% on top of that? Okay, and that's why they don't, they don't, it's not a VATable supply. Okay, there's other taxes, it's called the fuel levy. Okay, but for businesses, what do they do? They just compare the two. So in my example here, I would have had 28 minus 14, and they would have given me, okay, 14, which would have been payable to SARS. Okay, because it's what you owe. Right. You can get a refund if it was the opposite. Let's say if it was 14 minus 28, the other way around. Okay, then you would have had a refund. Okay, right. I doubt you'll get a refund um, if they do test VAT in any um, detail. Okay, right, and that covered that section. Right, so let's go to the textbook, and I want to show you guys the application now just of the accounting equation. Okay, and then there's just one other thing that we're going to do today. How are we doing with time? Are we doing well? Okay, we'll take a, a quick five minute comfort break just so you guys can pause for a few minutes. Um, but before we get there, let's quickly look at um, some examples. Uh, okay, let's go to back to the study guide. Okay. Um, let me take one of these. Now, let's look at this one. Okay, this is a nice one to look at purely because it looks at the tier counts. It gives you the tier counts. I will do the accounting equation for it. Accounting equation for activity 23. Ah, or 23, 2.3. So if you're wondering how to do an accounting equation question, this is how. Right, it's the same as you did before. Analysis is everything. Okay, so if you were asked to do an accounting equation question, you would have assets equal owner's equity plus liabilities. That's what, you, that's what you would have. And then you would have three columns. Okay? They might or might not be workings. I'm going to show workings. So I'm going to have a debit column here, and I'll have a credit column here. Okay, remember the debit column and the credit column is purely for workings. Okay, it's the interpretation. It's the understanding. It's the analysis of the transaction. Right, and that's where you get everything. Okay, the accounting equation is actually straightforward as long as you can interpret the transaction correctly. Okay, so transaction number two says, the owner made a contribution to the business. Okay, Leduma gave 5,000 cash and equipment at 2,000. Right, so what am I going to do here? Well, the keyword that would have stood out, 5,000 cash, bank asset increase, and equipment asset increase. Okay, the owner contributed this. Okay, so Luduma gave this money to the business and the equipment, so capital. Capital's capital. Capital doesn't need a reason. Okay, it's a credit. It's always a credit. Right, so those are your workings. Right, now, how do you complete the accounting equation part of it? Okay, that's the easy bit. Okay, once you've got this, you've got everything. Okay, asset increase. So where's the asset? Here's the asset. So you show a plus there, 5,000. Okay, equipment asset increase, you show a plus there, 2,000. And that's it. Okay, the last part is this, capital. Last week we said capital affects owner's equity. Do you agree? How does capital affect owner's equity? Positively or negatively? 
positively. Okay, the more you contribute, the more you're entitled to. Okay, if you give more to your own business, you're entitled to more. So owner's equity is going to go up, plus there, plus there, copy paste. Right, and that's what you would have seen in some of the other examples. Okay, so I'm just doing it for this one because this one has T accounts. The same thing applies. Okay, what did I do here? I debited the bank and I credited the capital. So if I look at the T account, okay, in bank, what did I say I was going to do to bank? Debit the bank. That's what I said. So there, bank, debit. Okay, you're debiting the bank. I'm debiting the bank. Um, bank, debit. Does that make sense? Okay, you're debiting that account. Okay, you're debiting that account. Right, and then if you scroll further down, there, capital, what did we say we we're going to do to this account? We said we were going to credit this account. Okay, so there's the credit for that account. You can't, you can't write capital and capital. All right, so you write the reference. Okay, so capital is being affected because bank is being affected. All right, you're getting capital. See, it's contra. Okay, every debit has a credit. Okay, so this goes with that. Okay, those two go together. Right, and every single debit and credit you can spot in that particular question, because that's how they did it. Right, so I'm not going to do that with you because you've got it. Okay, but I'm going to do this for you because you don't have this one. Okay, yes, you've got other accounting equation questions for the other one. That's fine. Okay, here's another one. Right, number five. Purchased inventory per check. If I'm purchasing inventory, inventory is an asset that's increasing, right? And if it's by check, bank is an asset that's decreasing, right? And that's it. Okay, asset increase, bank asset decrease. Right, so now I'm going to record that in my accounting equation. So I'm going to show a plus. 1,500 and I'm going to show a minus 1,500. Okay, and that's what they'll show in the answer. Okay, for all the other transactions that they've analyzed. Okay, and that's what you do. Okay, so see the point is it starts here. And that's why last week I didn't want to do this because that might have been tricky. Okay, get this right. If you get this right, this is like a no-brainer, right? because you just look at your rule and see, oh, asset increase, asset decrease, bingo, there's the answer. Okay, so keep it simple. Focus your attention on that. Okay, getting the right workings. If you can get the right workings, you can do whatever you like with it. Okay, let's do, it. Let's do two more. Number nine, sold inventory for cash. If I'm selling inventory for cash, notice the word inventory is there, but that's not the focus. The focus is on the sale. Okay, because that transaction talks about a sale, not a purchase. Okay, so you need to identify what the transaction is actually focusing on. Okay, and if this is for cash, bank is going to increase. Bank asset increase, sales bracket income increase, then I've got everything. All right, bank is what? An asset. So plus here with the right amount. 2,500. And then, how does income affect owner's equity? Positively. The more sales I make, the more profit we make, the more owner's equity you'll have in the business. Okay, so there's a direct relationship there. But I want to look at one that has an indirect relationship. Um, here, the last one, 29. Okay, just to show you the opposites. Okay, so if I look at 29, paid wages per check. If I'm paying wages, the bank is an asset that's decreasing. Do you agree? Okay, that should have gone this side. Bank asset decrease on the credit side. Wages, expense increase. There's it. Wages, expense increase, bank asset decrease. 
Right, bank is an asset that's decreasing. That's the easy one. You're going to show minus 800 there. Okay. Then you need to look at this one. Right, last week we spoke about it. I'm going to repeat it again this week. If your expenses go up, what happens gonna, what's going to happen to your profits? It's going to go down. Okay, if you have more expenses, you'll have less profits. Do you agree? Okay, so if I have less profit, will I have less or more owner's equity? I'll have less owner's equity. Does that make sense? Okay, that's why you decrease owner's equity. So I would show minus 800 there because of that indirect relation between expenses and owner's equity. Okay. Right, so those are some examples. Um, I don't want to talk about trust accounting yet because that might be too much at this stage. Okay, so I've introduced the journals to you guys. Okay, I've told you what the different journals are. There are a lot. Okay, there are six main journals in total. The cash journals are important. Okay, you guys also have a fees journal. Okay, that, that'll come up later on. Okay, there are some notes and slides on it, but we won't look at it now. Um, we're still getting there. Okay, right now I just want to make sure that the basics are good and that you understand how to apply um, the knowledge, the basics of the accounting. 